Hey everybody, this is Dr. Martin. I'm here to talk a little bit more about calculating the time weighted average. The video tutorial that I'm, that I'm creating here covers material that we've already covered in class. But I wanted to give you another resource that you could go back to while you're doing the time weighted average homework. Again, we've already done this in class. It's going to be exactly the same thing. Yeah, you know, I might use some different words, but it's going to be pretty much exactly the same thing. The reason I add or I provide this resource to you is because I understand that a lot of students are a little intimidated when it comes to math. Uh, so I want to help you any way I can, including uh, the video tutorial here. If you have any questions, any concerns about the math in this class, and there's not going to be a lot. But if you have any concerns, let me know. And let me reassure you that the mathematics that we're going to be using in this class are very basic, mostly adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. And I'm going to go through it with you step by step, the procedure for calculating the time weighted average. And, and you're going to be in good shape. You're more than capable of, of mastering the time weighted average. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about what we mean by time weighted average. Uh, the time weighted average refers to the worker's exposure to a substance measured and averaged over the workday. And once we've done that calculation, we compare it to the PEL or the TLV. Remember the PEL and the TLV are different standards. We don't have to choose both, we can choose one or the other. The TLV is a little bit restrictive, it's a recommendation. The PEL is the OSHA requirement. Time-weighted averages will usually be based on an eight-hour workday, but can be adjusted for a longer workday. I'm going to go over the procedure for um, what we need to do if our workers are putting in 9, 10, 11 hours a day for longer workdays, and that's pretty common in many industries. Um, a lot of workers would, would be thrilled if they only had eight-hour workdays. Now here's the formula, and again, don't be intimidated by it. It looks complicated, but it's really simple. Notice all we have, are, we have an addition sign in the numerator and an addition sign in the denominator. So all we're doing here is, once we get into it, will be addition and division. But I don't want to get too far into that part of it yet. I want to break it down. Uh, step by step, explain what all these different letters and numbers mean as we go along. I do want to say one more thing about the PEL and the TLV. If we are using the PEL as our standard and our worker exposure exceeds the PEL time weighted average, the company could receive a fine. Also, more importantly, the worker may be in danger if we are exceeding the PEL. The TLV, again, is the best practice in my opinion. It's more restrictive. It's going to provide a, a, a larger safety margin for our workers if we're using the TLV as our standard. One important note, and I've seen confusion when it, with regard to, to this note, this point in past years, so I want to try to clarify it, try to get everybody to understand it. If you don't, let me know. Now, it's, with the time-weighted average, we're talking about average across the workday. It's possible that worker exposure may exceed the time-weighted average limit for a limited amount of time. It's all about that average exposure throughout the workday. Let me give you an example. The Pell for silica is 50 micrograms per cubic meter. We have a worker named John. He's exposed to 100 micrograms per cubic meter for two hours of an eight-hour workday. So right out of the gate, well, the, the limit is 50, but he's exposed to 100. There's a problem. Not necessarily. That's only 100 micrograms for two hours of an eight-hour workday, and that's fine. Now, 100 micrograms all day wouldn't be good, but 100 micrograms for two hours of the workday when we do the time-weighted average, this, this calculates out to a time-weighted average of 25 micrograms per cubic meter, and we are below the PEL. So it is possible 
for workers to have exposure levels, short limit exposure levels above the time weighted average limit and, and it be okay. okay. If you have any questions, let me know. I, I usually throw a test question at you or at students uh, regarding this particular point, this particular note. So if you're, if you're don't, if you don't understand, let me know and I'll see if I can help you out. All right, let's take a closer look at the time weighted average formula. And there's the formula. Let's, let's explain what the different variables, the different letters mean. TWA, that's time weighted average. That's what we're, that's what we're calculating. C is a concentration level. A concentration level that we would measure through a sampling process or direct reading instrument. So C is for concentration level. T is for the amount of time at that particular concentration level. And notice we have C1 uh, and T1, C2 and T2, and then down here we have uh, T1. Let me, let me explain what that means a little bit. Now C1, T1, that's a concentration level and time span for one exposure. We're, what we're doing, we're breaking down the worker's exposure into little blocks based upon their level of concentration. You know, how long were they exposed for at 100 micrograms per cubic meter? And so on. So this is what we have here on the screen is the exposure for one period of time at one concentration level. Then we have a different period of time at a different concentration level. And throughout the workday, there, there may be eight or 10 of these uh, different time spans and concentration levels. Or maybe there's just two or three, or maybe there's just one. But it, it's all the same uh, either way, regardless of how many uh, periods there are. Yeah, you may have multiple time concentration periods, or if exposure concentration is the same for the entire workday, there will be only one. And when we get into an example, it'll, it'll become, uh, you, you'll understand it a little better. Again, a point that's obvious, we really already hit upon this, workers can be exposed at different levels for different amounts of time throughout the workday. The formula averages out the exposure across the workday, and that's what the time-weighted average is. The average exposure across the the entire work period. Talk a little bit more about this formula. In, a, in the numerator or the part of the formula above the line, we have our concentrations and our time periods. Below the line, we have the different time periods. So what we're going to end up doing is calculating how much they're, they're exposed to uh, we're going to calculate how much they're exposed to and divide that by how much time in the workday. Yeah, and it's really simple. I'm almost making it too complicated. And I think the best thing to do is just let's go ahead and look at a sample problem. Okay, we have this situation. Uh, we want to know the time-weighted average exposure for an employee with the following exposure profile. From 8 to 9 in the morning, he's exposed at 400 parts per million. And forget about the substance, we're just doing a generic substance uh, for this example. But from 8 to 9, that's a one hour period, he's exposed at 400 parts per million. From 9 to 11, he's exposed at 600 parts per million. From 1 to 3, he's exposed at 10 parts per million. From 3 to 4, 100 parts per million. And 4 to 6, 300 parts per million. So the first thing you'll want to do is, is write, write down your formula. Once you have your formula wrote down, then you'll start plugging in these numbers. Okay, let's, let's look at this exposure period here, and I'll relate this to where it's at in the formula. So 8 to 9 is 1 hour at 400 parts per million. There it is. That's this exposure period in the formula. Then we have a two hour period, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m., exposed at 600 parts per million. There's that exposure. Then we have a two hour period, one to three, where it's only 10 parts per million. 
Then we have a one hour period, three to four, where it's 100 parts per million. Then four to six, we have a two hour period at 300 parts per million. Then for the times, plugging in the numbers for the times, it's just that the first uh, concentration period that we're using, or that we're examining, eight to nine, that's one hour. Nine to 11, two hours. One to three, two hours. Three to four, one hour. Then four to six, two hours. Now we got everything plugged in, we just need to, to pull out our calculator and do the math. And let me see if I can bring a calculator up here on the screen. I'll put it right up here. And again, you don't need a fancy calculator for any of this. But I, and I like to keep everything in order. Whoops, where'd my calculator go? Here we go. So one times 400 is 400. One times 400 is 400. Now let me bring my calculator back up. Okay, bring down the next iteration of, of our calculation. We got one times 400 is 400. Now my calculator is not going to stay up there. I think we can do this in our head. It's simple enough. Two times 600 is 1200. Two times 10 is 20. One times 100 is 100. Two times 300 is 600. Then we add up in the denominator all these uh, time period. One plus two plus two plus one plus two equals eight. So now the next iteration of our formula, we add up everything in the numerator. And when we add up everything in the numerator, we end up with 2320. Try the, try the calculator one more time to check my math. Okay, we've got uh, 400 plus 1200 plus 20 plus 100 plus 600. Yep, 2320. That's exactly what, what we had on the slide. So then uh, we already have our 8 added up from the previous iteration of our calculation. So the last step is to just do the division, 2320. And that 2320, that represents the, the total exposure for the worker throughout that entire eight hour period. That's their total exposure for that entire eight hour period. And when we divide that total exposure by eight hours, we end up with a time weighted average of 290 parts per million. Double check my math, 2320 divided by eight equals 290 parts per million. So the worker's time weighted average is 290 parts per million. Now there is another way that you can do this and uh, if you were using a spreadsheet for these calculations, you could set it up in a spreadsheet. Uh, you, I call this a summary table. Set it all up in a summary table. And it can be a good tool for problems like, like this. Um, we have our exposure level in this column. We have our time in this column. And then this is the multiplication. This is our exposure level times our time period. Again, each line in this summary table is the equivalent of one of these parts of that formula. So with, if you use this approach, you have your add up this column, you end up with eight, add up this column, you end up with 2320, same thing as we had doing it the other way. Now there is the multiplication that we have to do, the 400 times one, 600 times two, and that's what we have over in this column. We have the exposure level multiplied by the time uh, of the exposure and that gives us these numbers. And just another way you can do this, and if you're a safety manager and you needed to keep track of this, and it might be worth your time to set up some spreadsheets. You just plug in your numbers, it does everything for you. All right, let's go ahead and talk about adjusting the PEL or the TLV for an extended workday. 
if we have workers working longer than eight hour days, we have to make some adjustments. And this is the formula that can be used to make those adjustments. And what we're doing, we're, we're adjusting the eight hour PEL or the eight hour TLV to a nine hour shift or a 10 hour shift or whatever, whatever shift it is. It could be 11 or 12 hours. Um, and what we have here in this formula, red factor is the reduction factor that we're gonna calculate. HRW, which occurs two places in the formula, is the hours in the workday, the hours they worked. Now all these other numbers are constants. It'll be the same every time when we use the reduction factor. So let's go ahead and look at a sample here. Whoops. There we go. Uh, we have, we know that the eight hour TLV for methyl ethyl ketone is 200 parts per million. What is the TLV going to be if workers are putting in a nine hour day? What is the TLV for personnel working a nine hour day? We just need to adjust this 200 parts per million so that it fits workers who are putting in a longer work day. And to do that, we use the formula. We plug in nine here and nine here. Everything else is a constant. You know, 24, 24 minus nine is 15. That's the only calculation you're doing in that iteration. Now we end up with two divisions, 8 divided by 9 and 15 divided by 16. 8 divided by 9 is 0.89. 15 divided by 16 is 0.94. Now we just need to multiply these together. Our reduction factor is 0.84. But that's not our adjusted TLV. We need to use the reduction factor to make the adjustment to the TLV. And we do that by multiplying the value, the reduction, fact, the reduction factor, multiplying that by the 8-hour TLV. In this case, the 8-hour TLV is 200 parts per million. So we multiply 200 times 0.84, the reduction factor, and we end up with a TLV9 of 168 parts per million. That TLV with the subscript 9 that just tells us that it's the TLV for a nine hour workday. If it's a 10 hour workday, you could put TLV 10 there. But 168 parts per million. If you have workers working nine hours with methyl ethyl ketone, this would be their exposure limit. All right, let's, uh, let's look at a problem that puts the reduction factor and the time-weighted average calculation together. And my dog is over here on the floor groaning. She wants to go outside, so we're almost done. Okay. All right, in this situation, we have a construction worker uh, working an 11-hour workday. Part of the day, he is using an angle grinder to finish a concrete parapet wall and was exposed to silica at the following levels. From seven to eight in the morning, zero micrograms, eight to 10.30, 75 micrograms, 10.30 to 12, 20 micrograms, 12 to one, zero micrograms, one to two, 60, two to three, 115, and three to six, zero micrograms. Okay, what we're looking for is the adjusted PEL for silica then we're also wanting to know the time-weighted average exposure for the worker. Then we're going to compare the two to see if the worker has been over overexposed. See if we need to uh, implement additional controls. And an 11-hour workday, that's, that's pretty common in a lot of industries. So that's not that uncommon. But let's just go ahead and break all this down. First, we'll calculate the reduction factor for the 11-hour workday. Again, the formula is looking a little bit different here. It's the same formula. I just don't have it all, uh, all uh, I don't have it formatted the same way. But again, we have 8 divided by the daily hours work, 24 minus the daily hours work divided by 16. We plug this in, 8 divided by 11, 24 minus 11 divided by 16. 
8 divided by 11 is 0.73. 24 minus 11 is 13, so now we need to do 13 divided by 16, which end, we end up with 0.813. And for your purposes, if you want to round that to two decimal spaces, I'd be fine with it. If you just wanted to call that 0.81, that would be good. So now we need to do this multiplication, 0.8 times 0.813. Our reduction factor is 0.593. And you could round that to 0.59, or you could even, I, I would go 0.59 probably if I was going to round it. Okay, now we multiply the reduction factor by the Pell for an 8-hour workday, which is 50 micrograms per cubic meter. So the Pell 11 is 50 multiplied by 0.593. The Pell 11 is 29.65 micrograms per cubic meter. Right, now let's calculate the time weighted average to see where our worker is with regard to the Pell. Is he above or below the Pell? That's what we're, that's what we're concerned about. Is he above or below that Pell? If he's above the Pell, we need to do something to make him safe. If he's below the Pell, we're in good shape. All right, here's the formula. Again, I'll, I'm going to walk through this slowly here. Just, just so remind you and show you where all these numbers are coming from. 7 to 8, 0 micrograms. That's one hour period, 0 exposure. Now you could leave that out, but I didn't want to leave it out because I didn't want to confuse you. I didn't want you thinking, where did that go? Why didn't he have that in there? And if you got zero that you're multiplying by, it's going to be zero. So you can leave that out in, in a, from a practical standpoint. Okay, our next time period or our next exposure period, 8 to 10.30, which is two and a half hours, and 75 micrograms. So there's that exposure period. Next exposure period is 1030 to 12 at 20 micrograms. That's one and a half hours at 20. And that's this one here. And then 12 to 1, 0. We got one hour period at zero, zero exposure. From 1 to 2, we have 60. 1 times 60. From 2 to 3, 115. 1 hour period, 115 micrograms. Then he ended the day without any exposure. It's a 3 hour period. So it would be 3 times 0. 3 and 0 micrograms exposure. Then uh, once we get all of these numbers plugged in, in the numerator, then we do the same thing in the denominator. Again, first time period was one, second time period was two and a half, third time period was one and a half, fourth time period was one, fifth time period was one, sixth time period was one, and the last time period was three again. So now let's. Uh, Go ahead and go to the next iteration. Okay. Zero times one is zero. Two and a half times 75 is 187.5. 1.5 times 20 is 30. One times zero is zero. One times 60 is 60. One times 115 is 115. Three times zero is zero. There we go. Then we add one, two and a half, one and a half, one, 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 plus three, that adds up to 11. Let's just go ahead and double check. Well, we'll double check our math in the next uh, iteration. But when we add up everything in the numerator, it should be 392.5, everything in the denominator, 11. Let me bring my calculator back up here. Okay. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna add in the zeros. Here, but let's do 187.5 plus 30 plus 60 plus 115 equals 392.5 
and let's just make sure that we got our numbers. We know it's 11 hour work day, but again, yeah, I just, I tend to be pretty anal when I'm doing these kinds of things. I check and double check and recheck everything. And uh, you don't have to be quite as careful as I am, but I, I would recommend it. Uh, so one plus 2.5 plus 1.5 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 3 equals 11. So okay, we got the right numbers in the numerator and the denominator. Now we need to divide 392.5 by 11. And we end up with a time weighted average of 35.7 micrograms per cubic meter. Our worker is above the Pell. We need to go to work as safety managers and working with the project managers and other management and figure out a way to reduce their exposure. Could be could be some type of ventilation system. We could put a uh, we could put a uh, vacuum system on the grinder that he's using. We could use uh, water in some capacity. It's difficult to use water with an electric grinder. Uh, we might use work rotation instead of having him do all the grinding all day, uh, have another worker uh, step in for him occasionally. If you have two workers with this exposure profile, their time weighted average is going to be below 29.65. As far as, in my experience, the best control for this situation are the specialty vacuum systems that have a shroud that will attach to the grinder and with that shroud it captures the silica at the source sucks it into the vacuum um, through a HEPA filter and your exposure level is minimal with those devices and they're not that expensive those devices are a lot less expensive than an OSHA fine would be and a heck of a lot less expensive than someone developing silicosis would be now, if you wanted to use the summary table approach, here are the numbers for the summary table approach. All right, a uh, couple of examples. You can, uh, you should be able to do the, the, the worksheet, the problems that I gave you, the practice problems. But if you can't, let me know and I'll help you. All right, have a good day and I will... Uh, see you in class.